Free now, former President Jacob Zuma is challenging a high court ruling declaring his release on parole unlawful. Zuma served less than two months of his 15-month contempt of court sentence. The Helen Suzman Foundation, AFRI Forum, as well as the Democratic Alliance, want the parole decision set aside. The NCA senior reporter Avi Dealer joins us now from Bloemfontein. Good morning, Avi. A very important case today. The former president wants that particular judgment set aside, the one that stated that he should have not been granted that medical parole. What are we expecting today? All eyes will be at the Supreme Court of Appeals today as the stakes are high for former President Jacob Zuma. If that December ruling from the High Court is upheld, that could mean that he could finish his 15-month sentence at the Escort Correctional Facility. Of course, he's already served two months there, but uh, that would then mean that uh, he'd serve another 13 months. But he is challenging that, and I have the spokesperson of the Jacob Zuma Foundation with me, Umkulu. Thank you for joining us at ENCA. Stakes are quite high for former president. Um, why is he appealing this, given that the High Court said that um, his medical release on medical parole was irrational and illegal? Yeah, no, we're here not for law for, for anything. We're here to deal with the uh, maliciousness of the system. We're here to deal with uh, vengeance. We're here to deal with uh, hatred. We're here to deal with people that actually, if they can have it their way, they want to see President Zuma dead. What we have is a situation where a legitimate decision take, taken by a commissioner of the correctional services who had two medical opinions, one from the medical people that actually examined President Zuma and uh, some advisory parole board uh, that had a different view. So he had to make a call taking uh, all of those things into account and he made a call in line with the authority that he has. And for a judge or all these right-wing elements to come and say something to the contrary is not legal, it's just unlawful. So we're here to, to seek justice, to say that uh, what had happened uh, in terms of President Zuma being out on parole uh, is in line with his medical condition, which has been pronounced by medical people that examined him. President Zuma did not ask to be on medical parole. President Zuma did not ask to be on any parole whatsoever. The system put him on parole. Now President Zuma is being punished for all kinds of... Uh, a, a, a dis, dis, disagreements about how the system dealt with him. So the casualty here is President Zuma. How can that be? President Zuma is not getting any justice in this country. This case is all about President Zuma uh, being seen to be dead. It's a really uh, a bad case, this. But the Medical Parole Advisory Board said that he's not terminally ill and he could finish the rest of his sentence um, in custody. Why then go oppose that, uh, given that the High Court itself saying that it is an illegal decision that was taken by Arthur Fraser, the commissioner, uh, the National Commissioner of the Correctional Services? Maybe they didn't hear me. I said there were two, two, two medical reports. One was from the people that actually did their work, the people that actually saw President Zuma, People that ran tests on President Zuma, they pronounced that he's got terminal illness. This is not a hearsay, it's, on, it's written in black and white. Then you had a parole board, advisory board, which did not have everything else that these other people had, and they come and they make their own political decision. And Arthur Fraser had to be there to make sure that he takes a lawful decision. So what we are here to contest is a political decision, uh, because... Arthur Fraser, firstly, does he have authority to make this call? Yes, he does, because the, the incarceration is less than 24 months, so therefore the authority lies with the commissioner. So he took the decision in line with his mandate, and he took the medical condition into account as pronounced by the doctors. The fact that they differ is neither here nor there. Uh, so the so commissioner took the right decision. Will uh, former President Jacob Zuma be in court today? Yeah, we expect him to be in court today, yes. Okay, I just want I just thank you very much. Um, of course, we're expecting court to be underway in a few minutes' time, but I see the leader of the Democratic Alliance, John Stanezen, uh, coming through now. John, thank you for, for joining us at ENCA. Um, I understand that DA is one of those who will be making their arguments here. What will your arguments be based on? Well, the arguments are based on the law. Um, there is a process that determines medical parole in the country. That process clearly was not followed. Special treatment was given by Mr. Fraser to Mr. Zuma because of their mutually reinforcing relationship over many years, and that Mr. Zuma did not qualify for medical parole, and therefore to have released him from his sentence 
and serving that time on the basis of medical parole was unlawful, irrational, unreasonable and was right to have been set aside by the lower court. We just spoke to the spokesperson of the Jacob Zuma Foundation who suggests that this is a political witch hunt and in fact the former president did not ask to be put on medical parole but uh, this is a political witch hunt. I just want to get your take on that. Well I think it's uh, a load of hogwash like everything else that Mr Mani has to say about this matter. Um, the truth of the matter is that um, there is law in South Africa and that if we don't close this revolving door of medical parole down, I can tell you that all of those implicated in state capture and the Zondo Commission are also going to abuse the system to get out of jail free, while ordinary citizens who do qualify for medical parole are denied that medical parole. Um, this is not a political witch hunt. This is standing up for the rule of law in South Africa and making it very clear to South Africans that it doesn't matter if you're the former president, whether you're a municipal worker, whether you're the leader of the opposition, the law applies to everybody equally. Mr. Zuma chose to cock a snook at the Zondo Commission. He chose that course of behavior. It was a, it was a course of his own choosing. The consequences now are something he needs to face as a result of the choice that he made. Okay, I see even there's a preparation. Yeah, it looks like we can expect the former president uh, any moment now as of course we expect even the court proceedings to be underway from around 9.45, the official time that we've been given. Yeah, we've seen the legal teams make their way inside yeah, uh, as well as advocate Dalim Bofu, who do understand will be representing former president uh, Jacob Zuma. You do understand this is of course pertaining to that uh, July 21, 2021, I beg your pardon, where the former president, we brought you that live footage of him uh, handing him South over at the Escort Correctional Services and of course we do understand days later he fell ill he was taken to the hospital wing of the facility where he was released um, within two months and given medical parole by Arthur Fraser the Correctional Services National Commissioner that's against the advice of the medical parole advisory body who suggested that uh, the former president could have served his sentence then we saw the Democratic Alliance the Afri Forum as well as the Helen Susan Foundation head to court and that decision was overturned in December 2021 where the High Court ruled that it was an irrational and illegal decision to grant medical parole to former President Jacob Zuma. Hence now he's come to the Supreme Court of Appeal where we're expecting that matter to be underway any second now. All right, Aviwa, thank you very much for that update. I must say, very interesting. Cannot wait to hear the arguments from all parties because they put forward very strong positions that they hold. So it will be interesting to find out what powers did the then commissioner in fact have in so far as granting that parole is concerned. We'll leave it there for now. That's senior reporter Aviwa Mdila out in Bloemfontein for us. More news.